So I'm here with uh, Dan Pearson, who's the instructor at the Capitol Jodo Kai in Washington, D.C. Uh, and we had a couple of questions for Dan. Uh, the first question actually is, um, can you tell us sort of briefly how you got started in uh, Jodo? Sure. So I started Jodo almost 20 years ago. I had been doing Aikido and uh, wanted to learn some more weapons. And a friend of mine knew Kamenota Sensei in Japan, and I was able to go to Japan and train with Kamenota Sensei. Uh, and right from the beginning, I knew he was the right teacher for me, and it was the right art for me, as, as, uh, because he really spoke to me. Physically, I was, I was very gifted to do Joe, and spiritually, I kind of understood Joe from the beginning. I uh, was very lucky that I ran into Kamenota Sensei when I did. That's how I got into Jodo. Jodo is a dueling art. It's 400 years old, but it became a policing art. So it's got a lot of depth to it. It's got 400 years of teachings in it. And so it's very interesting, as well as being fun. It's very uh, intellectually stimulating to understand all the lessons and all the logic that are in the, the art. So, um, this is a joke. Yes, that is a joke. Um, and as everybody can see, it's, just, it's, it's a stick. And it's made out of white oak, and it's approximately how long? Uh, 49 inches, just under 50. Okay. American. Yeah. So, um, can you describe a little bit what your teaching experience is like in the United States? Mm -hmm. Kaminoto Sensei has given me license to teach Kusada Gamatensu, which is a sickle and chain art, and also a license to teach Jogo. And I lead a group in Washington, D.C. There's several of other students there that have done Joe for many, many years. And we have about 20 students who are active. And uh, it's a strong group. We practice every Saturday for two and a half hours and every Tuesday for two hours. But everyone's expected to practice every day. Joe has so many detailed movements that have to be right that if you don't practice a little bit every day, you start to lose your skills. And so everyone understands that what they learn on Saturday, they have to practice on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And, and so that's the kind of group we have. We do lots of embu, uh, public demonstrations. We do the Sakura Matsuri in Washington, D.C. every year. We do other public demonstrations during the course of the year to try and spread Joe and the awareness of Joe around the Washington area. Okay, so what do you see for the future? Uh, I, I'm probably I don't think you can talk for the future of the art in Japan particularly, but in the United States when you're trying to raise the profile of, of uh, Jodo. So uh, how do you think that's going to work out? Well, Jodo's a hard art. It takes a lot of commitment to really get good at it. And so it's not for everyone. But if you try it for a little while, if you like physical challenges, you like a feeling of combat, which the kata and Joe really bring out this feeling that you're having a real fight, you're right on the edge of a real fight. If you like those things, and you like intellectual stimulation, solving puzzles, it's a great art. And so, I've been pleased at how many people have come to try Joe, and how many people stay uh, in our group. We have, Kaminoto Sensei has students in Washington, in Detroit, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in Dallas, and so there's a network of senior students of Kaminoda Senseis in America who are all teaching his style of Joe. There are other people in America who teach Joe, and I think it is becoming more popular. It's probably the most popular Cody old school uh, of any Japanese weapons art in America right now. And so there are different lines of Joe. You can trace them back to master teachers in Japan, and everyone follows their own teacher. But being Americans, I think the attitude is, you do something that's so rare, even though you do it differently, it's okay. It's just neat that someone else is doing this art. So I see people who do another line of Joe, a different teacher. It doesn't matter. Politics don't matter in America. I'm just impressed they're doing it. And it's fun to talk to them about why they do what they do. Uh, I feel like Joe's doing very well. It's this art. It's 400 years old. It only lives in your body. And 
It can't exist in a book. It can't thrive on film. It has to live in a body. It's like uh, a flu virus. It's like <laughs> it really has to be alive in you. And when you're gone, the art is gone. And so your teacher, who learned it from his teacher, who learned it from his teacher, this line that goes all the way back to the founder, Musa Benoske, that gift when kind of notice sense, it gives it to you. You say, well, I have to keep this alive as long as I can, and I have to spread it as wide as I can. It's an obligation to the art, to the founder, to my own teacher. And I feel like that's going on pretty well in America. I feel like that's succeeding. Cool. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we should do it more often. Yes, absolutely, I think so. Okay, thanks. thanks. Thank you. I've had uh, I've had uh, the great fortune to be able to practice with Tom Nurse and say when he's come here for gosh to the United States. I think two, at least, no, probably three. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, that's tremendously helpful. Mm -hmm. okay, so, uh, in your current practice and your assistant instructor, I want to ask you a slightly different question. Sure. Uh, what is, can you kind of describe who your ideal Joe student would be uh, as an American, like somebody coming in the door? You know, who's never, knows nothing about it and, you know, wants to get started. Maybe yeah. he's seen it, I don't know, on video or something and thinks that's really cool that he shows up. That's a, that's a very interesting question. I think someone who's coming in with a willingness, basically a, a blank slate, in a sense, no matter what they've learned before or what kind of martial arts or experience that they had, mm -hmm. if they come to Joe with a fresh open mind, willing to learn, and show, uh, show spirit from the start, show humbleness in the face of this great heart. And just be willing to apply themselves, and uh, I think those are the basic ingredients one needs. We're fortunate in that in the Cafeteria of Budokai, we have a lot of students with just those qualities. It makes it a real joy to work with. Um, do you have like uh, students at the Budokai who like do multiple arts like they do? Maybe they do Jodo, but they also do Yai, or they also do oh, Kendo. Sure. Oh sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. And one thing seems to lead them to another, or. Um, and I think in best circumstances they become complementary. So the techniques they want to learn in one art, they can apply in Jodo and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's probably the, I, I think the best circumstances. Sometimes you have students come in that have so many, a smattering of so many different arts mm -hmm. that it's difficult for them to settle one and, and really concentrate on one set of techniques. But if they can learn, keep them separated and learn to blend them eventually, mm -hmm. which happens the more they practice mm -hmm. these individual arts, and they bring this, the strength of each art to the other arts to have one complete whole. Sure. Okay, I just want to follow that up a little bit. This is actually something because it's, it's come up in, in my teaching experiences. Um, like New York is kind of like a big candy bowl full of different arts. I mean, mm -hmm. some of them are more authentic than others, mm -hmm. some of them are more traditional than others. Um, what would you recommend for a student who's maybe been in Jodo for uh, six months or a year and then like they see, I don't know, Kudo or Naninata, and they, they think, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. should somebody stay with one art for a certain length of time before they branch out to something else, or should they, you know, kind of dip yeah. around into different things? I, I, I think it would be best if they get a solid grounded, and it's up to the individual to determine how long it takes them to stay with that one art to have that solid basis. And then, yeah, from there, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's fine to be able to branch out because I, I think then the, the new art will complement, but the two arts will complement each other. Uh, so then, um, what do you see as uh, the future for yourself in, in Jodo? Uh, uh, to keep practicing, keep learning until I can't move my body anymore. That's about it. I've never got. I used to have. I took. I have to admit, I took a hiatus for maybe two or three years. And certain people, I guess, that they have dreams of money or fame. I would dream about doing Buddha. 
And then Dan con contacted me one day and said, hey, you want to get together? And have a couple of beers, invited me to the dojo, and I've been back ever since. I'm like fated to do dojo until I die. <laughs> And that's Dan's marketing prowess. <laughs> Take people out and buy the beers and exactly. them, until they agree to come to the Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Soften them up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much. Thank you.